Welcome back to the fields of Perthshire in a bitterly cold Scotland. Well, we were down to minus 10 here last night in Perthshire and as a result, I'm afraid there's going to be no detecting today. In actual fact, there might be no detecting for quite a few days because this weather is going to continue for almost all week and unless I've got a pneumatic drill I'm not getting through that. It is beautiful now that the sun's out it's up to about three or four degrees in the sun which is um, about 35 in Fahrenheit so we're going to have another bitterly cold night tonight I think we'll be down to minus 10 degrees centigrade again and the ground is only going to get harder. But I thought it's getting to the end of the year. It's the perfect time to do a recap. So I'm probably going to need to do multiple parts. But we'll start with part one of the best finds of 2022. So stay tuned, stay warm, and hopefully we'll see you on a dig sometime soon. Lint of silver just in this bottom edge right there. Now this has got a centimetre and inches measurement on it, it goes up to 8 inches and we are oh, plus that below the soil level, I mean we're, we're 12 inches, we're 30 centimetres down I'm reckoning. Thank God I dug that because it wasn't a great signal to begin with, very very faint but I thought I'd give it a bash and I think we've been rewarded with a massive silver coin, I think it is a massive silver coin. That is a coin, that has to be a coin. That is a coin. Oh my God, it's huge. This is a beauty. Oh my God, the water is freezing. The water must be about a degree. I can't get it any, I can't get it any cleaner than that. My hand is about to drop off. The water is so cold. Look at the size of that coin. Okay, I found as a sort of sheltered spot in the sun. My fingers, I can barely move them. They're just about ready to drop off. So we've got Georgius III, by the grace of God, Britannarium, Britannia, Britanniarum, no idea, never heard of that one, Rex FD, so 1819, and on the back side, we have got Oni Soit Que Al Pence. And that's the, the motto, the Latin motto for the for the Order of the Garter. More importantly, we've got a beautiful figure on the back on a horse with a sword and he's stabbing a dragon. And this is Saint George. This is George and the Dragon. So he is the patron saint of England. The Order of the Garter was created in... I think it was sometime in the middle of the 1300s. It was created by King Edward III, if I remember rightly. And uh, St George was chosen as the patron saint of England. The uh, the flag, the red cross with a white background, the English flag, that's called the George Cross, which comes from this man here. OK, we're out the hole. It was a couple of spade fills down and it seems to be somewhere in here. Seems to be in there. We've got a clod. Oh, you beauty. We have got silver or a ring pool. Right, never easy to do this one handed. Have we got a hammered coin? A moment of truth. Oh, can't get it one handed. There we go. That is a silver coin. Oh, it's a beauty. That is an absolute beauty. This is a beauty. Givillimus 111 de Gratia or de Gratia. Givillimus is William and 111 is the third de Gratia by the grace of God. So William the third by the grace of God. And you can see his bust looking to the right hand side. And on the other side we have got a date. We have got 1697 at the top, 
and it will say something along the lines of Mag Britannia, so Great Britain, um, France et Hibernia, and Ireland, Rex King. So King of Great Britain, Ireland and France, 1697. So in the centre you've also got the three lions of England, you can see the three fleur de lily or flowers of the lily of France. There will also be a harp of Ireland and a rampant lion of Scotland. This is the face of an incredibly happy man because he has just found a massive silver coin. A massive silver coin. 2,000 uh, rice or rice. And then at the top here it says 1870, but on the other side it says 1889. And it's Petrus II DG, which I'm assuming means De Gratia. And the rest of it, we've got no idea. But look at the beard on him. And more importantly, look at the size of the coin. That must be the biggest silver coin that anyone I know has ever found. And that is massive. Now, with the power of Google, we've just gone online. This is from Brazil. How does a silver coin from Brazil, made in 1889, end up in Perthshire, in Scotland? And it is solid silver. It weighs 20, what was it, 25 grams or 26 grams? So it's almost, it's almost one ounce. And it's minted in Brazil. That has got to be one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. 2,000 reis from Brazil. Paul, well done, son. That is tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. That is the biggest silver coin I've ever seen. And it's from Brazil. That just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. There must be a story behind it, but... We might never find out what it is. Here he is, Mr. Smug. He's got a hammered coin. He has got a hammered silver coin. Who have we got? Elizabeth, maybe? Of England? This is the head side. Uh, uh, there's a crown there, tip of a crown, that little fleur de lis. So, who have we got? R? Is it an R and I? An A? Maria? It wasn't a Maria. Well, there was a Mary. There was a Mary, Bloody Mary, who married Philip of Spain. You see any words there that say anything about Philip? Yeah, that's definitely an R, an I, and an A. A Gothic R, I, A. Ria, Maria. So I think it is. I think it's Bloody Mary. So called because she, after the death of her father, Henry VIII, she brought back Roman Catholicism. She ruled for about seven years. When uh, Henry VIII died, there was a bit of a crisis because he'd had five wives and he'd had various children. Lady Jane Grey took the throne for all of nine days, the nine-day queen. And she was then booted off the throne by Mary. And Mary shouldn't have taken the throne because, well, in fact, I tell a lie, it wasn't Henry VIII that died, it was Edward VI, the son of Henry VIII. He died young. And then there was a succession crisis and Mary took the throne. Edward didn't want Mary to have the throne because she was a practicing Catholic, but she took it anyway. It's quite a smooth coin, but I think that's who it is. And if it is, that's going to put it sometime... I think she ruled sometime about the 1550s. Give or take. 
I'm sure she ruled for seven years and she got the nickname Bloody Mary because she persecuted lots of Protestants as she attempted to bring England back to being a Catholic country. And when she died, her half-sister, Elizabeth I, took the throne and reinstated the Protestant faith, the Church of England. So beautiful coin, a bit worn, a little crack on one side, but hey, silver. Size-wise, probably going to be a sixpence. That would probably buy you a gallon of wine back in the good old days. Maybe a wee bit more. Good coin. Well done, Fletch. Have a good search around. See if there's more to be had. Do you see what I see? I think we've got another pipe bowl, except this one is maybe intact. Has it got the... No, oh, it's missing the... Uh... It's missing the, the mouthpiece. I think it's actually whole. It is. It is whole and it's decorated. That's beautiful. What is it, like a building? Possibly. Both sides are decorated. That's Masonic, isn't it? And that's the little, um, foot that I was talking about on the other one that was for resting on a surface. Well, I'm pretty sure this is covered in Masonic symbolism, but not being a Mason, I've got no idea. I am sure that's a compass for, um, you know, measuring and for doing drafting, draft work. Uh, you've got a ruler there, which is at a right angle. Is that a set square? Is that what you call that? I'm sure these flowers have probably got something to do with it. You've got a a star there with a sunburst design around it. I'm sure that's Masonic. You've got these little things down here. What are they? Are they like little little stars or something? Then on the other side, you've got a temple. Were they not something to do with King Solomon's mines or something? And the all-seeing eye above? And you've got these pillars either side. So I am pretty certain that this is a Masonic clay pipe, or what's left of it. I've left the mud in it so it doesn't fall apart. And as I say, my guess is that this would be 1850s through to the early 1900s. It's amazing that that survived in a ploughed field. But it's obviously just got lucky, unlike the other one that I got 10 minutes ago that's been broken. An interesting one for Marty. Look at this. Now this is a little sailing ship. And that's copper, copper alloy. Not sure, could it have been, we were wondering about back of a pocket watch or even just some sort of decoration on a piece of furniture. But that is... Um, a type of sh sailing ship that became quite popular. If I remember rightly, it was in the 1800s. It was a, a clipper. The Cutty's Ark was probably the most famous one. And these were these really, really fast ships. And they were able to get from Scotland to America and back again in record time. And they made many, many people in Scotland very rich because they were able to bring tobacco and tea and such like much, much quicker and make more journeys in a year. So what do you reckon? But then at the same time, actually, it looks like there's two figures there, which means that it's quite a small ship. So what do you reckon? Let us know. Date-wise, I'd reckon it's probably going to be 18 into the 1900s. I think Marty's just turned up the find of the day and an eyes-only find on the surface now. Not something you see very often in Scotland. <laughs> it's Hong Kong in the side as well. And it's made in Hong Kong. And it's a giraffe. <laughs> so he's turned up a Hong Kong giraffe that unfortunately has lost its lost its spots <laughs> of all the weirdest things that you can find in a field. How about that? It's made of plastic, in case anyone's wondering. 
It uh, would have been nice if it was porcelain or something, but it is a giraffe. Right, the boys have caught up with me, and it looks like Sneaky Pete, the sneaky little devil that he is, who's always fantastic at finding lead. <laughs> He's like a magnet to lead. It's like he wants to die <laughs> from the toxicity. But he has found this. And this, I think, is the find of the day. This is a great big lump of lead. Okay, from this side, it doesn't look particularly spectacular. You would say, that's just going to be junk. But turn it over. And what the hell is that? That is like a... A sheep or a beast I think Pete's saying woolly mammoth with a little figure look there's a foot and a bent leg and an upper body that looks like a horn yeah I think you're right actually now what is that so it's flat as if it would have either been mounted on something or it was designed to go up against a wall and that is Without doubt, one of the strangest things I've ever seen. The question is, what is it? And how old is it? You know, generally when things are made of lead, they've normally got quite a bit of age to them because people started to make things from pewter and, you know, more more human-friendly metals than toxic lead. So could that have a bit of age to it? Could it be medieval? Could it even be Roman? Um, I've got no idea is the answer, but either way, that is one of the strangest looking things that we've had out of a field. Even stranger than Martin's giraffe that he got last week, which was which was epic, but uh, but it was made of plastic. This, on the other hand, is lead. So what do you reckon to that? That is bizarre. Thank God Martin's here because I'm finding absolutely nothing but he's got himself a nice little button. You can just make out some of the silver gilding on it and it's still got the loop but on the other side is even better because it's got a nice little insignia on it. So you've got a crown at the top. You can just make out some lettering. Does that say Nemo? Nemo me impuni lacessit, possibly, is the writing, which is the the Scottish motto. And then it looks like a bird flying with something below it. Is that another crown, maybe? What do you reckon to that one? I'm going to take a stab and say it's probably World War II, but maybe it's older. Could be World War I. We have had World War I stuff. So let us know in the comments, but that is a nice find. Well done, Martin, yet again. Worth the wait. Very similar to one that Martin had previously. Um, we've got, I think, AUG or IP, oh, what is that? Yeah, I think it's A AUG, Augustus. And then we've got C-O-N-S-T-A-N. And then over here, we've got a T, an I, a V and an S. Constantius and then we've got more letters at the end normally it starts and ends either in Imperator or Augustus they seem to be the the in phrases joined by another aeroplane overhead and uh, the, be the back is even better look at that so this is a particular one again that, that Martin got previously in this field and I'm sure it's um, it's called the Fallen Horseman. So the figure on the left hand side is on a, well it doesn't really look like it, but is on a horse. And the horse is collapsing. So is he. And above is the might of the Roman Emperor or Roman Empire spearing him. So it's called the Fallen Horseman. The letters around the side, I do not know. Can't make them out. Um, I'm sure I'll be able to figure it out once I get home but we've got letters at the bottom which I think is again what Martin had before and it's a mint mark I'm sure it was something along the lines of Sissic or something like that or I-S-I-S -S something 
And if I remember rightly, it stood for a town or a village called Sisica, which, if I remember rightly, was in modern day. And it was Assis, A-S-I-S. Assis, I think that was what the mint mark was on Martin's coin. And that stood for Sisica, which today is apparently in the Balkans. I think it's in modern day Croatia. So, Constantius, not sure when he reigned exactly, but I'll guarantee you it was the 4th century. And it probably dates sometime between about 310 and again probably 370, 380 AD. Martin's got another silver, silver coin. How far was it from? Fletchies. I'm not sure what hole was this, is quite a lot up there, but it's pretty in the vicinity. It's pretty close. Again, you've got a shield, you've got the fleur de lis of France in the top left, I'm assuming they'll be in the bottom right as well. And then top right and bottom left, you've got the three lions of England. It looks like it's got the same shape and design and size as the one that Paul got. Very worn again, but look, there's a face there. There's an eye, a nose, a mouth, looking to the left. An M, maybe? An A? Is it going to be Mary or Maria again? It's really hard to tell, it's really smooth. It's definitely a head there in the centre looking to the left so I think it's the same as Paul's yeah I think it's going to be Mary bloody Mary so that would put it she was as I mentioned before she was the daughter of Henry the eighth fairly crisp a coin eh, could be so we are out on the final dig there, which is probably about six or eight inches down. What have we got here? Is that a coin? That's a coin. Oh, is that a Roman? It is. That is a Roman silver coin. You beauty. Well, ladies and gents, it has had a wee wash in the stream, and it is even better than I hoped. Look at that. That is a cracker. Absolute beauty. A silver denarius. Look how chunky it is. And then on the back, get a little figure. And, I don't know, possibly an altar, and some sort of wreath, something else hanging in their hands. And, A-U-G for Augustus. Um, I think this could be Commodus, or... Septimus Severus because I'm sure they've both got that kind of wild hair and the flowing beard turn my probe off but that's probably going to be late 2nd century into the beginning of the 3rd century here's the thing you've all been waiting for and it is a beauty Marty that's a cracker that's better than mine look at that That is the same emperor as I found. You can just, I think, see the words Sept. S E P T, Septimus. S E V, Severus. Septimus Severus. And at the end, I M P, which I think is Imperator. I'm sure there'll be a few words like Caesar and such like there as well, but that is in mint condition. What have we got on the back? We have got AVG or AUG for Augusta or Augustus. 
we have got A N N O N A Anona. Anona, she was the goddess of Rome. Particularly the plentiful Rome. She's got in her left arm on this right side is a cornucopia, which is the the horn, the goat's horn of plenty. So it would be overflowing with food, drink, flowers, corn, everything that was important to the people of Rome. So Anona, she was the goddess of Rome and later of Constantinople, which became the capital in the 4th century. She was particularly responsible for the supply of corn and grain to the city of Rome and later Constantinople. Septimus Severus, he was on the throne, well, not the throne, he was emperor of Rome, I think from about 190, 190, 195 AD, and he died in... 211 AD, he died in York, in the north of England, or Ebor Ackham, as it was called back then. He took ill while campaigning in Scotland to try and put down the Picts, as rebellious Scots as we were back then, called the Picts. And uh, Anona, grain was really important because at the time the population of Rome was about a million people. It was the largest city in the world. And about a quarter of the population of Rome got free grain and free corn. It was called corn dole or grain dole. And in Scotland and in the UK, you often say if you're unemployed, you say you're on the dole. And that's where the word comes from. It was the first example of mass state-sponsored sort of financial help for the, the poor people in society. So about a quarter of the population of Rome got free bread and free grain dole. And that's where the phrase dole comes from, on the dole. But that is a beauty. That's better than my one. We could have a hoard. That sounds very coin-like. So let's see what we get. Second spade full. Not only might we have a coin, but it might be a silver coin. Ah, it's a button. It is a button, but it's a silvered button. So this is the reverse. Can't make out any letters, but it would probably say somewhere in London. Seems to be the most common place that these were made. And we have got what I think is a livery button. Crown at the top. And a crown at the bottom. And in between is a little, uh, a little hand which is showing two fingers bent over. Not quite sure what that means. But this is probably a family crest. Date-wise, I'm guessing it's probably in the late 17 into the early 1800s, if anyone's any good with their heraldry. Let me know if you recognise this. Got another ear-blowing signal right here. Coin all day long. Here he is, Garrett Kid. If it's a coin, it's close to the sea. <laughs> Nice You're always sitting on the fence, aren't you? <coughs> it's a good strong signal, but it's probably a coin just under the surface. Or... A coin just under the surface or tin foil is Fletch's coin. Same 15, 15 centimetres down. 15? Yeah, can. Okay, let's see. Well, Marty has got a cartwheel penny, so let's just quickly have a wee look. The Scottish detectorists that are always handy for wiping your fines on. <laughs> Look at the state of everyone's sleeves from rubbing themselves. It's good on that side. That's a cracker on that side. So you can see Britannia seated on a rock and it says 1797. They all carry the same year of manufacture, although they were actually made for about three years. And 
on this side you can just make out big fat headed George the third looking to the right hand side so big cartwheel penny well done Marty so back to my find and it's a bit not what we were expecting because it's a big bit of lead so we were both wrong it wasn't a coin but it's got writing on it by the looks of it almost looks like a gravestone it's a mystery it's lead it's a very big chunk of lead shaped let us say almost like a gravestone like a miniature gravestone but on the other side it's got letters but some of the letters almost look back to front i've got no idea what that is do you know what that is I would guess it's probably going to be 17 or 1800s looking at the the type of lettering. But what is it? Let me know in the comments below. Sounds very good. Well worth a go. Right, we're out the hole. And I'll give you a clue. Well, I won't give you a clue. Do you see what I see? Give you a clue. It's right there. Do you see that? Now that looks like a hammered coin. A medieval hammered coin. It is. That is a silver hammered coin. Right, let's give it a tease out the soil. Gently, there we go. And there you are. That is beautiful. And that is probably about eight or nine hundred years old. Time to give it a wee clean up. See if we can get some detail off it. I have shouted Paul to tell him I've got a hammered, he shouted back, rubbish, because he's not having a good time, because the XP versus the Garrett is kicking his backside today. So this is a hammered medieval penny. This is the reverse. It says in this quarter, C-I-V-I, which is Civi, T-A-S, Tas, City of, and here, it's a bit difficult to make out, but this quarter, T-O-R, T-O-R, so that means that's C-A-N, Cantor, City of Canterbury. So that's where this coin was made. On this side, you can clearly see a head with locks of hair and the letters E-D-W, and that's Edward Edward the First, King of England, Edward Longshanks, the man who had William Wallace executed. So this coin is from the era of William Wallace and Robert the Bruce. That is fantastic. It's been in the ground for, it probably dates to sometime in the late 1100s into the very early 1200s, probably about 1190, give or take. Fantastic. I think it's a silver coin. Oh, you beauty. Right. Oh, I think that could be an early mild. That's a Gavillium. I think that's a William the Third. You absolute beauty. Right, let's give this a clean up. Haven't had one of these in ages. Find of the day. This is an early milled silver coin. It's very, very worn. They normally are. You can just make out HIB at the top, which is Hibernia or Ireland. This will date probably sometime in the 1690s. It is, I think, either a sixpence or a shilling. Can't remember which is which. There would be a date on here, but I'm not seeing any obvious sign. It's so well worn. However, on the other side, you can clearly see a head looking to the right hand side with a very, very large nose. 
just up here and the curly hair and you have the words Gevilium which is or Gevilimus which is William this is William the third who was also known as William the second of Scotland he's also known as King William of Orange or King Billy he came over in 1688 with his wife Mary to take or should I say seize the throne of Great Britain because James the seventh who was the father of Mary was a Catholic and they wanted rid of him so he was chucked off the throne and replaced with his own son-in-law William and his wife Mary who was James the seventh's daughter and it kicked off the Jacobite rebellions because the supporters of James the seventh who was also known as James the second who wanted him put back on the throne James in Latin is Jacobus and they were called the Jacobites so that is a beautiful coin I know it's well worn but I am over the moon with that I can't believe I've never found a, a coin of this type in this field so that's tremendous it shows that there's clearly going to be more to come I'm over the moon with that another one for Martin this is made of lead it's got a couple of clasps top and bottom that look like it would attach around something and on the other side we have got the word Dunlop Fort Dunlop so I'm wondering if that might be Dunlop as in the tyres Mr Dunlop started making the first pneumatic tyres if I remember rightly quite close to I'm sure his first factory was somewhere near Renfrew near Glasgow and uh, started making pneumatic tyres in the late 1800s so we'll need to look that one up online but if you know let us know in the comments below some sort of medallion or token or coin is it lead or is it silver or what? I think it's lead we think it's lead Fletch is applying it to his forearm as we speak you know, I think Marty has produced the find of the day and he dug it up with all of us standing here because that's why we all came together to check the signal I called silver coin, I think Fletch did the same and Marty was probably thinking that too and it's neither but it looks like it's been silver plated some sort of medallion or some sort of commemorative coin you've got a crown, you've got two shields it looks like it says 1902 and it definitely says Edward, but we don't know which one. We're guessing probably Edward the Seventh, because in 1902, I'm sure he was crowned King of Great Britain. That was the son of um, Queen Victoria. She died in 1901 or 1902, and I'm sure he was officially crowned in 1902. So you've clearly got two coats of arms. You've got the one on the right here. You've got Scotland, three lions of England and the harp of Ireland. So this, I'm assuming, is his bride. And I don't remember who she was. But it does look a bit Germanic. On the other side, you've clearly got two heads side by side. We think Edward VII. And we think Mrs. Edward VII, whoever she was. She doesn't look very happy though, she's frowning. But I think that is find of the day. Well, it's 1-0 to Mr Fletch. He's got his first good signal and it's produced a little 4th century Roman coin. It's a wee bit broken, a wee bit damaged, but you can just make out a head facing to the right hand side. Probably going to be Constantine the Great or something like that. And on the other side you can see a figure here standing with an arm reached out behind and that's a crouching barbarian and I think it's called Emperor Dragging Captive so we should be able to date that quite well when we get home there would be a mint mark at the bottom you can see a couple of letters there um, could be something like Constantinople or something like that and that will date to I'm guessing 
320s to 350s, 360s, something like that. What a start. We're what, 20 minutes in and he's got a Roman already. Good lad. Well, this was a deep one, but I think we've got it now. See that there? I think that's lead. See there? I think that is a bit of lead. It's got the right colour and it's moving. It's definitely moving. There we go. There we go. Ta-da. It's a tortoise. <laughs> It's not a tortoise. I think we have got a palm guard. See how that sits in the hand? In the palm of the hand? I think that is a palm guard for leather working. Let me just give it a wee clean up, see if I can see any marks on it. It's this kind of dome shape, you'll see from the side profile. Quite often they were made by pouring molten lead into a seashell. And the idea is that they would sit in the palm of your hand. You would strap it to your hand with a piece of piece of uh, leather or some string. And it would allow you to sew, to put needles through big, thick pieces of leather without stabbing yourself in the hand. Could be quite old. I've had quite a few of these off the fields. Um, I think I've actually had one out this field, either last year or the beginning of this year. I need to check my GPS when I get home. But a uh, good chance that that could be medieval, if it is what I think it is. The only thing that's thrown me is it's got this little raised bit in the middle. Normally it's flat on the back. But, don't know, maybe that's just something something extra, a slightly different design. But if it's a palm guard, then, God, they were in use all the way back to the Roman times, even before then. So, it could be couple of thousand years old but most of the ones that we find I think are medieval or slightly post medieval so you're talking probably sometime 11 1200s through to 14 1500s that's a good find good bit of age I'm really happy with that so we're in here Okay, what have we got? I see something white. Oh, it might be lead. Huh. I think it's junk. Is it lead? Oh no, it could be lead. It is lead. Oh, brilliant. It's a lead seal. Well, that is a good start. That is a really good start. And it's got a little... It's got a little lion on it. And a crown. Oh, you beauty. Well done, John. You are a star. Right, let's give it a wee clean up and see. Well, I'm very happy with that. As lead seals go, that is a beauty. I've had this type before. I always wondered if the lion in the centre, which we call a rampant lion because it's kind of standing on its back two legs with its front. Okay. Oh, dropped it. <laughs> Who was it that commented I always drop every third find? You're not far wrong. <laughs> um, I always thought this might have been an, a Scottish thing because Scotland is the land of unicorns and the land of rampant lions, but I believe this is actually from the Netherlands. They also have the rampant lion. So probably attached to some sort of flax or certainly some kind of imported goods that came and uh, that's beautiful, really happy with that. I had a few of these over the years and this is certainly one of the best ones. Superb. Date-wise, I'm probably guessing 17 into the 1800s.